Well, good so, afternoon then, uh, Raul Ilagi Mayer. You are the. Uh, you have a blog, which is called Automatic Earth, and you are very active with it. Um, can you say something about Automatic Earth? When was it founded? What does it do? Uh, it was founded uh, almost 11 years ago and uh, Nicole Foss and I founded it because we wanted to write about finance. Whereas the people that we were uh, writing for before that, the, uh, the oil drum, didn't want us to do that and we thought it was too important not to. And what are you doing here in Athens? I um, am supporting a, a group of people who feed homeless and refugees. I see. I've uh, written a bunch of articles at the Automatic Earth about that. Now even though you have written articles that, uh, that show clearly how important you think it is to try to defend Julian Assange, and I read one that you wrote today which was very much on that subject and was a powerful article. Um, you really don't agree with Julian Assange on the importance of defending the European integration project or Citizens Europe. What do you say to that? I have no idea what either of these things are. You don't know what they are. So you don't defend... Did you, you mean like the EU? Well, not exactly the EU, but there are people who think that the EU, like for example DiEM25, uh, which uh, I have been associated with, and you also know the people concerned, uh, as you know they, they have hopes that uh, the European Union can be turned into something better than it is. But this isn't, a, uh, well anyway, you comment on that. If you, if you don't no, but the, 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 the two, two terms you mentioned, what was it, European integration? Yes, European integration. And what was the other? Uh, the Citizens Europe. Citizen Europe. So that's not the EU, it's something else? It's something else, yes. Okay. That's something else. Then I don't know what they are. You don't know what it is. I know. Well, it's just, uh, it's too uh, vague for you to have an opinion about. All right then. All right, I'd like to quote some of the things that you've said, and we're going to put this up on the screen also. Uh, on May 16, in an article entitled, I am Julian Assange, you wrote, Julian Assange appears to be painfully close to being unceremoniously thrown out of the Ecuadorian embassy in London. Uh, if that happens, the consequences for journalism, for freedom of speech, and for press freedom will resound around the world for a very long time. Uh, that is something that you have written. I take it that's something what uh, that's something that you uh, believe. And would you like to say more about this idea, or have you said it all? Well, I, I think there there's there's not nearly enough people who realize uh, uh, what the consequences are going to be of uh, a challenge being uh, thrown to the wolves. What will they be? He he stands for every journalist, but he also stands for every citizen. He's, he's the man who uh, uh, offered his freedom to give everybody else freedom. Mm. You, you say that uh, he has the credibility that he has because he has never published anything that isn't a hundred percent verifiable and true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, 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 as we talked about this before, uh, that is the basis of WikiLeaks. It's it's uh, 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 truth, honesty. Um, nobody would ever give him another document if they were in doubt about uh, that. That he would uh, 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 preserve secrecy. He would protect their identity, or he would treat the documents in uh, um, the best way possible. Mm. Um, you also wrote this. People like Chelsea Manning, Kim Dotcom, Edward Snowden and Julian Assange are among the smartest people our world has to offer. We should be cherishing the combination of intelligence, courage and integrity they display at their own risk and peril. But instead we allow them to be harassed by our governments because they reveal inconvenient truths about them. And pretty soon 
there will be nobody to tell these truths or any truth at all. That's a very pessimistic uh, assessment. Uh, would you like to believe that it's too pessimistic? No, isn't it more like realistic? Realistic. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how many people like uh, Assange or Snowden or, or Chelsea Manning are there? We, we don't have a, a never-ending supply of them. Mm -hmm. uh, in your article, Julian Assange and the Dying of the Light, you wrote, the ideal situation would be if Australia would offer Julian Assange safe passage back home. Assange has never been charged with anything other than the UK bail skipping offence. Well, when, not charged. He has been charged with other things, but they've been charges have been withdrawn, of course. Um, it is true that he, he has been charged with what? Well, wasn't he charged with the rape or something? In no, no, no. What was it? What happened there then? If he if it wasn't a charge? Uh, it, yeah, they 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 uh, said they wanted to talk to him. Uh huh. And and they didn't they didn't try very hard. Well, to that, do so. that 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 was very strange. From from what I know of the story, the uh, the the prosecutor uh, uh, let him go, told him he was free to go to Britain. Mm. Then I don't know if it's the same prosecutor, Marianne Ni or Nai, uh, but anyway, the the the, the Swedish justice then did a one eighty, and as soon as he was in London. They said he had to come back because they wanted to talk to him again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, merry go round. But uh, uh, none of the two women involved ever uh, filed uh, any charges against yeah, them yeah, or yeah. any complaint. Yeah, they even went out of their way, uh, uh, albeit far yeah. too late, yeah. to say uh, uh, he didn't rape me. It never happened. Yeah, you know, it, it seems seems uh, that's a smear thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's been very successful. It seems so. Um, it's true, as, uh, it's true that years ago, talking about Australia against safe passage back home, it's true that years ago the Australian government acknowledged that it had responsibilities to help and protect Australian citizen Julian Assange. For example, in 2011, Prime Minister Julia Gillard said... Uh, we are supporting Julian Assange the same way we would support any Australian citizen who got into a legal difficulty overseas. But for years after that, these responsibilities seem to have been forgotten. Uh, and even supporters of Julian Assange seem to assume that it was OK for the Australian government to allow Ecuador, a uh, weaker, poorer and more vulnerable country than Australia, to take responsibilities that the Australian government had said that it was taking, but it seemed seemingly was not. Uh, do you have any comment on that? I mean, who wrote that? Um, who wrote? Oh, what about the, this comment about uh, about Ecuador and Australia? I wrote it. Okay, okay. Don't you agree with it? <coughs> um, but the, the the Australian government has a very strange role in this. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right now there, there's a, a, an older speech by uh, present PM Malcolm Turnbull that's being uh, tossed around on Twitter, in which he was very supportive of of uh, sounds. Mm -hmm. Is this a but recent apparently speech? No longer is. I think that was also from 2011. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Next subject. Would you like to comment on the controversy over Seth Rich? versus the hacker, Gucci Fur 2, there's, uh, there seems to be a lot of misunderstanding or a lot of controversy about this. Uh, I think a lot of people wouldn't even know who Seth Rich is. What, would you like to enlighten us a, a little bit of people who don't know and what's involved with this? Well, from what I know, uh, Seth Rich was, uh, uh, where did he work? Uh, uh, well, he had some connection with the Democratic uh, National Yeah, Party. yeah, yeah, but probably DNC, yeah. Mm. Uh, 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 he was found murdered in Washington. Yeah. Not far from the White House. Mm. And he is rumored to be the guy who uh, gave the DNC emails to uh, Assange, to Wikileaks. Yeah. This is something that Kim.com apparently, this is a position that he also has. Yeah. Uh, 
you don't want to say anything about this, or would you like to make a comment? Well, I, I don't know en en enough about that, but but it it it, it seems obvious that the whole Gucci for 2.0 uh, thing is is a fabrication. Mm -hmm. You know that, that, that there there's this link between Assange and Russia mm -hmm. that uh, the U.S. really really wants to make because mm -hmm. it smears both. Yeah. You know? If they can make a connection between the two, then They're both hard. Well, both look uh, a lot worse. Yeah. 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 And and since neither can really defend themselves, mm -hmm. this narrative can be built and built and built. Yes, that's right. If you're dead or if you're prevented from speaking, you can't defend yourself. No. Um, well, at the moment, I and a few other people are discussing two ideas in relation to Julian Assange. One of them is purely symbolic and it's aimed at counteracting the media bias against Assange. That is the declaration of a Julian Assange day. The day we propose is the 26th of January. Uh, we heard a few words from the mayor about the significance of January 26th in Greece, in the, con the mayor of Aegina, in uh, the context of Greece's liberation from the Ottoman Empire. But January the 26th is also an important day in Australia, though many are saying today that it's the national day, you know. Many are saying that Australia's national day should be moved to another date, more inclusive of the many Australians who don't feel that the 26th of January is suitable for the country's national day. Uh, we're going to listen to Amanda Stone, who in 2017 was the mayor of the Yarra City Council uh, in Melbourne. Uh, we'll listen to what she says. We've been talking to our Aboriginal community in Yarra for some time about the meaning of January the 26th for them, and we've heard from them that it's not a day of celebration, it's a day of sadness and loss for them. And we've been considering how we might address that to reflect those views. In February this year, the council resolved to ask the officers to consult with the Aboriginal community about the future of January the 26th. And that was also in the context of a growing momentum more broadly around the Change the Date campaign. So we felt it was an action whose time has come, that there would be broad, broader support for it. And when the officers presented the results of the consultation with Aboriginal people on Tuesday, that's how we voted. We're not telling anyone what to do. We're not um, changing the date of Australia Day as it is at the moment. Um, we are not instructing people on how to spend January the 26th. It will still be a public holiday and people will still enjoy their barbecues and picnics and get-togethers in yeah. our parks and gardens. Why is it important from your perspective as a mayor to change the day? As a mayor of the city of Yarra it's important for me that we are inclusive in what we do as a council. By holding celebratory events on January the 26th we are excluding, actively excluding uh, an important part of our community, the Aboriginal community, yep. who do not find it a case for celebration, who have told us so for many years and who are thoroughly supportive of the action we have taken. We want to be inclusive, we want everyone to be able to celebrate our national identity and we need to find a date that we can do that on. That's great. Do you have any date in mind? No, I, it's, uh, I think it's something that we need to, that needs to come out of a a conversation. I think lots of people have lots of ideas. Uh, if we're going to be really inclusive, we need to discuss it with everybody, not impose another date which might be um, con contentious for other other people. Yeah, that's good. Uh, now, the second proposal is more concrete. It was initiated uh, by the following posting by someone who calls himself realist in the discussion that was started by Ray McGovern and what he said was this, if the American government thinks better of it and decides not to prosecute Mr. Assange for perhaps, or perhaps offers him a plea bargain countering his time cloistered in the embassy against a short sentence, I wonder where he will choose and be allowed to live. Australia has abandoned him and now Ecuador has betrayed him. He can't trust any American vassal state within the EU, NATO, or the Five Eyes, that's basically the Anglosphere. Would Putin allow him to run WikiLeaks out of Russia? I suspect not. 
No free press throughout the Middle East. Most of uh, Africa, all the stands, so that there's no free press in those places. The stands of Central Asia. Uh, China is not looking to harbor a gadfly of the West. Latin America is spotty, though Glenn Greenwald makes his home base in Brazil, in spite of the de facto coup against the left there. How well are human rights protected in places like India or Malaysia? Singapore, Burma and Thailand are too authoritarian. Arthur C. Clarke decamped in Sri Lanka. Are there any truly sovereign island nations in the Indian Ocean or the South Pacific? Too bad Newt Gingrich didn't get to establish his proposed moon base. Julian might have managed WikiLeaks from there, beyond the jurisdiction of any nation on Earth. Now I commented on this, I said that it's a frivolous comment. Um, and if frivolous comments are permitted, why not outrageous comments? Are there Jewish people who would be outrageous enough to begin to lobby for Julian Assange to be given political asylum in Israel? Would he accept such an idea? Just the discussion of such an idea might be helpful in clearing some mental blocks. Now, Rila said, in reply to this, he said, uh, yes, Assange finding asylum on the moon may be a frivolous comment, but it underscores the paucity of venues that could pay the price to shield him against American wrath. In response to your invitation to discuss Israel as a plausible safe harbor for Assange, I should think his morals would preclude that possibility, even as a last resort. It would be repudiating everything he stood for. As they say, tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. Now, do you have any comment on that interchange, or don't you want to say anything about it? It's, it's a very long way of uh, saying there are no options. Uh, you don't have to go through all the options to arrive at the conclusion that there are no options. Yeah. Like, you know, so, in other words... Uh, so, no, a, 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 a new country that was uh, brought to the, uh, the, the front in the past few days is Mexico. Mexico. Yeah, people uh, think that uh, Lopez Obrador might be the guy to, uh, to turn to. I suggested Iceland. No, yes, you suggested that. They're, they're independent enough to uh, to pull off something like that. Though I have no idea what the, the Irish, uh, the, the Icelandic uh, 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 government feels or thinks about uh, Assange. But they're independent enough. They're, they're the only country that, that locked up a bunch of bankers. Yeah. And, and uh, to tell, tell the creditors to go take a hike. So. I think what realists would say is that these countries are not strong enough to protect Assange and that, you know, that, they, that the CIA and whoever's after him would get at him. Well, Iceland has a, a big moat. That's a, that's a good natural protection. A big moat? But yeah, but yeah, and there, yeah, there is of course no, no country that, that can 100% uh, 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 defend uh, yeah. somebody like Assange. Yeah. Right, there was a similar discussion in response to an article published uh, by Ketlin Johnson. As long as Assange is silenced, claims against him are illegitimate, she said. Uh, now, in, that, uh, after, in the discussion after that article, I wrote the following. Because Assange is charged with being anti-Semitic, we should start getting Jews and Israeli Jews at that to start lobbying for him, to be given political asylum in Israel and see what happens. Oh, Assange is uh, anti-Semitic as well now? Well, they, everyone, you know, all of the people who want to find things to throw at him, they throw that at him also, you know, as you know, and you wrote about that, I think, in one of your recent articles. Uh, well, I don't know, I, 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 I said uh, 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 Jeremy Corbyn and Donald Trump yeah. are, are accused of that. I didn't uh, realize that yeah, Assange yeah. was, was Assange accused Assange is also well. accused of that. Uh, well, what would happen if, 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 the, if that kind of lobbying started? Would he reject the idea? Well, enough Israelis reject uh, the idea for it to be clearly ridiculous, which is uh, what most people think it is. Um, well, the man who wrote, the man who started this discussion, calling himself TL, he says, I'm not sure how sincerely you mean your idea, but I would not want to see Assange go to Israel. Israel has turned into a right-wing state under another lying demagogue equal to Trump. Assange needs to be in a place where peace, justice and freedom of the press are valued not in a place that has its lips affixed to America's ass. Um, I said in response, yes, there have been other reactions of this kind, but some favorable reactions also. Will it be possible for this experiment to go ahead? 
And TL said, I hope not. Specious experiment. Well, this is just raising an idea, and you, I think, what you have more or less said the same thing that it's uh, not even worth discussing. Well, you didn't actually say that. But anyway, uh, we're raising the idea now. Um, but I, I might point out that this, this uh, the same man who said that it's a specious experiment, he also said later, I don't know how to help Assange. My congressional delegation in the US is part of the problem. I'm not on any social media. So in other words, uh, it's the same idea really, s telling, s telling him to have a, to find an asylum on the moon or saying that there's no other possibility uh, that the person doesn't know how to help Assange is more or less saying the same thing. Anyway, there is an ongoing campaign now. Uh, th these ideas are not part of the campaign as far as I know and I don't, want, I don't want to impose them on the campaign because the campaign is following its own logic. There are no ideas. There's just a long list of no options. Yeah, as you said, right. Okay. All right, well, anything else? Can, can we, uh, you know, this is continuing the interview we started with the mayor, and I hope that we'll get other people. Oh, I, I, I would like to add what, right. I, uh, what we just uh, uh, talked about before uh, the camera got rolling. Uh, that news about uh, Assange's health is uh, uh, not good. You know, he has severe uh, toothaches, his legs are swelling, and his bone density is falling fast yeah. because of the lack of exposure to sunlight. Right. So, in the end, what it comes down to, Ecuador doesn't even have to uh, kick him out. They're yeah. just counting on the fact that he will have to walk out. Yeah, or, or if he be, can. Be, yeah. Or be carried out on a stretcher or yeah. in a coffin or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we understand that wars come about as a result of lies peddled to the British public and the American public and the publics all over Europe and other countries, then who are the war criminals? It is not just leaders, it is not just soldiers, it is journalists. Journalists are war criminals. If wars can be started by lies, peace can be started by truth. 